guys, Matsuko Films here. Welcome back to another comparison. I was originally supposed to do this comparison in three different videos, but they're all $50 sets. So I just decided to combine them into one. And today we will try to find out which $50 set is superior. $50 is a very common price point for Lego Star Wars sets. So there are four sets in today's comparison. Starting off with our oldest set, which is listed as retired on lego.com, but you can still buy it on Amazon and from other retailers. So I still say that this set counts, and that is set 75254, the ATST Raider. This set is recommended for ages 8 and up, and it comes with 540. The second set is set 75301, Luke Skywalker's X Wing Fighter. This set comes with 474 pieces and is recommended for ages 9 and The third up. set is set 75312, Boba Fett's Starship. This set comes with 593 pieces and is also recommended for ages 9 Our and up. The final set here is set 75322, the Hoth ATST. This set comes with 586 pieces and it is recommended for ages 9 nine and up anyway let's get into our first category which is mini figures. st raiders minifigures are very good it is the mandalorian cardoon and two clatooinian raiders the x-wings minifigures are probably the strongest point of this set but it still does not compete with these other sets even though they're very solid minifigures you come with luke skywalker princess leia general dodonna and R2-D2. The Slave 1's minifigures, yes I'm gonna call it the Slave 1, comes with Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. The ATST also comes with some solid minifigures, it comes with the ATST driver, Chewbacca with the brand new printing, and the Hoth Rebel Trooper. I would say that the minifigures go to the ATST Raider. It is very close between the slave one and the ATST Raider, but the ATST Raider just comes with more minifigures, and I think that the old Mando minifigure has become very underrated, but it is still a really great figure. So I would say that minifigures go to the ATST Raider. Sets come with a lot of play features, so I'll try to go through this as fast as I possibly can. Starting off with the ATST Raider here, you can open up the little cockpit area, put them in, and close it up. There are there is a little bit more like movement and stuff you can move these cannons you have this knob right here and you can make the ATST go you know turn it turn its head this knob is very very like hard to turn the other ATST's knob is much much easier you also come with these two spring loaded shooters which are obviously pretty cool you also come with some movement in the legs but it won't it doesn't come with a lot of movement overall so play features pretty cool on x-wing this. is also pretty cool you can put luke skywalker in the cockpit you also do have r2d2 he sticks out a lot so it doesn't really look that good but you also come with two spring loaded shooters here which are pretty cool and you also can lift the x-wing up and put the S foils in attack position, but they close very, very easily. So when you're like swooshing it around or whatever, you have to be careful to not close them. So overall, I would say that the X Wing doesn't have that many play features, but it's still pretty playable. So Boba Fett Starship or the Slave One from top to bottom. Starting off here on the top, you can fit Boba Fett in the cockpit. You can lift the setup and the wings will move with however you place the set. So you can put it in like landing position or flying position, right? And you come with two stud shooters here. So you can shoot those on both sides. So let's shoot the other one. There you go. Pretty cool. And you can also grab and open up this little thing and inside there's a Gamorrean guard. I totally forgot the, about this play feature and I would have like forgotten about it if I didn't just find out about it just like a few few minutes ago. So 
Yeah, but you can land it like this or you can land it onto this little display stand speeder looking thing, which really doesn't do anything. It just has like this ladder and you can also just put the, put the slave one on here just like that. So yeah, I would say that the slave one comes with a lot of clay. So with the ATST, it's more of the same as with the ATST Raider. You can fit a pilot in here and close them up. You have a few cannons here on the side. All of these can move. You also come with two stud shooters, which are pretty cool. I can fire both of those. There you go. You come with the knob. This one can actually spin 360 degrees. Also, this cannon can move as well. And then you have some movement in the legs. And you also do come with this little probe droid that can spin around and, and use its arms and stuff for playability for this set. So, yeah. So, playability, I would say the amount of play features that you get with the Boba Fett's Starship or Slave 1 is pretty cool. But the thing is, you don't get anybody to fight with in the Boba Fett Starship or Slave 1 set. So I would say that the ATST, this version of the ATST, is the winner for playability, even though the other ATST was close. I would say that the knob is just easier to, to move and stuff, so ATST, Hoth ATST gets the point. All right, so displayability. This category is going to probably be the most even out of all of them. I would say that the ATST Raider, you can't really do much with it. The movement in the legs really stops it from, you know, different display positions because there's very little movement in the legs, but it still looks very, very cool just standing there on display. So displayability yeah. here with the X-Wing Starfighter is not that great. I guess you can put it onto some kind of display stand and put the S foils in attack position and all that stuff, but it still won't look good on display. This is not a good looking set. It's a very boxy and the r 2 sticks out a lot and it's just not very good looking and it doesn't really look that good on display. It doesn't look as good as that 2018 X-Wing, but overall I would say you can't really do much with it. You can just, as I said, put it on a display stand, stand the minifigures around it or inside and that's about oh, it. Boba Fett Starship or the Slave One. I would say very, very good looking set on display. It's the only one that comes with the display stand and it's just a very, very good looking set. You can just sit it on your shelf, put the Boba Fett inside, stand the Mandalorian, let him do whatever he wants and you have a very nice looking Boba Fett display. Also, if you put it next to that new Boba's Palace, it'll look very, very good. Displayability for the ATST. This set looks pretty good on display. You can really just stand it on your shelf and that is really all that it can do you can obviously you know start a little fight scene but there's nothing much else that you can do on display with this set so i would say that displayability goes to the boba fett's starship or slave one it's a really nice set and you also come with a display stand so yeah you see with the atst raider set this set looks very, very accurate to what we see in the Mandalorian. You come with all of these sticker details and the details on the feet and the cockpit and like the head of the ATST is also very detailed on the outside. The inside would need a little bit of work, but it is a very accurate and detailed set. So now let's yeah. talk about accuracy. As I mentioned in the previous category, this set does not look good. It does not look accurate to the X-Wing Starfighter. And it's just not, not that great of a set. It's not accurate. It's not really good looking on display. Maybe if they made the set look good, maybe you could like let the accuracy go and even if the accuracy takes a hit, the set would at least look good, but it just doesn't, and yeah. 
Now let's talk about accuracy. So this kind of like the X-Wing is a downsized version of a way bigger set. The original Boba Fett's Slave One or Starship costs like $120 or at least the previous version for the 20th anniversary. And now we have this one extremely downsized, only $50 with only 580 something pieces. Meanwhile, that other set came with over a thousand. But because it's downsized, they managed to throw in so many little details in this set and it looks very, very good. But because of the little speeder build, accuracy takes a hit because this speeder is not accurate. We've probably never seen it in Star Wars ever. So yeah, it definitely gives it the good look on display, but accuracy wise, the little speeder doesn't even exist in Star Wars. So accuracy yeah. for the ATST is pretty good. I would say that this set is pretty accurate. You do come with a little flaws in accuracy, mostly when you go down to the legs, you have like a bunch of holes because of the Technic pins and it doesn't look that great. But in general, this set is pretty accurate, but it still does not have the accuracy of the other ATST set. This set just looks very, very accurate. Very, it looks a lot like the original thing from the original ATST from the show. So the accuracy category goes to the ATST. All right, extras category starting off here on the top with the box. You do have Darth Vader, which is inaccurate because this is a set from the Mandalorian. And yeah, that's really all the problems that I have with the instructions and box of this. Extras wise, I don't really have anything to say about the X-Wing, the box art and the instructions and stuff are all very good and there's nothing really wrong with it. All right, so when you go to the extras category, Boba Fett Starship very sh struggles a lot, basically. First of all, should be called the Boba Fett Starship. A lot of people say that it's because when your mom goes out to get you Boba Fett's Starship, she needs to know what Boba Fett Starship is. But, you know, you could just put Boba Fett Slave 1 on there. You don't need to put only Slave 1, but Boba Fett's Slave 1 could totally work they decided to put Boba Fett Starship and it makes no sense to me. Another thing that doesn't make sense here in the extras category is this right here. They put the Mandalorian sets here on this side, but they put the minifigures from the Summer Wave here on this side. Doesn't make any sense to me. So extras category, definitely not that great for Boba Fett. The extras Sorry. category, I have one problem with this set. They show two sets on the advertisements, two of the same sets on the page. It makes no sense, but here you basically have all of the hot sets and then here you have the little winter wave that they did. So it doesn't really make sense to advertise the ATST and the Snow Trooper Battle Pack twice on two different advertisement pages. I would say that that doesn't really make sense. So I would say that extras goes to the X-Wing the only set here that didn't actually have any problems with the box art or the instructions. So yeah, on to our next category. Now let's talk about our final category, which is value. So this set did retail at $50, but you can't get it for $50 nowadays. It has gone down to $40, $33 and this set because they're trying to get rid of all the copies because it's already currently retired you can still get it at a few places but you won't get it at full price it's already discounted down to forty dollars or thirty five dollars or whatever so i would say that the value for this set definitely is at its best right now so if you still haven't gotten this set then go get it and now let's talk about the x-wing value wise this set is very very bad you do come with under 500 pieces so the price per piece ratio is is good i'm not going to talk about the price per piece ratio for any of these sets because all of these sets have a amazing or a decent price per piece ratio as you talk about this x-wing but 
Price per piece ratio is not everything. I don't pay attention to it at all when I call a set overpriced. This set is overpriced by a lot. The The set itself is downsized. It doesn't look good and it costs $50. I would say if there is any time to get this set, it would be kind of like with the ATST Raider when it's down to like $10 and they're just trying to get rid of it just to get rid of it because they don't have anything else to do with it and they lower it down to like $30, $40. That's the time to get this set. But overall, this is a very bad set. Value-wise, this set is really, really good. It's very small, but for $50 with oh, almost 600 pieces, this is a very, very good deal. And it just has very good value, I would say. It's still not like... You can find it on clearance somewhere, probably on like Black Friday and stuff, but you don't really need to get it on clearance. I think $50 is a good price for this set. Value for the ATST is really good. You come with 586 pieces for $50 and a very, very good set with three minifigures. Four, if you count the probe droid, I count the probe droid as a build, but it looks really, really good as well. And the ATST itself, it's a little bit smaller in comparison than the ATST Raider, but that's only like the head of the ATST. The rest is pretty similar, and it's maybe a little bit downsized, but not that crazy. It is a very good set, but I would say that value wise, especially now with all of the clearance and stuff, ATST Raider wins. But back when it cost $50, if all of these sets would cost $50 right now, I would say that basically the ATSTs and the Slave 1 all have very similar value. So all three of the sets get a point. The X-Wing, just a very, very bad set when you compare it to other $50 sets. That is it for this comparison. The ATST Raider is the best $50 set available right now and I think that it makes sense the ATS Raider is definitely the best overall set and it got three points it won minifigures it won accuracy and it won and it got a point for value our two runner-ups were for second place basically were the slave one which won displayability and got a point for value and then the atst the hoth atst which won playability and also got a point for value and then fourth place is the x-wing this set isn't really that good it only has the good box art and the instructions that don't, don't really have any flaws but except that that's really the only thing that it's good at. It's overall a very mess set. So, ATST Raider is the winner. I would say if you don't have the ATST Raider yet, definitely go get it. It's a great set. It's very, very cheap for what you're getting. And it's just overall worth it. So, go get the set. It's really good. And then I would say go get the Slave 1 if you're just looking to get maybe a second set. Those two would be very, very good to get. Once the ATST Raider retires, get the Slave One, and then the Hoth ATST, and then if you want to spend another fifty dollars, get the X Wing. But with that said, that is it for today's video. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, see you all in the next one. Bye.